talk about hats now. Show is hats and guitars. Let's talk about how to take care of your hat, your felt hat. There's a very important video. I didn't really have my room to do the video, so I'm doing it in my son's room. It's just like his bed and stuff. It's my little boy's room. So it's nice and quiet. I figured I'd do the video here today. Okay. Taking care of your hat is a basic, basic thing. Um, there's two or three things that basically you know, always ruin these hats. And, you know, I, I'm there in the repair department every day, so I see what people do. Um, wrong to their hats, so I know what to do right. Um, number one thing, a lot of you guys probably know this one. Okay, this is the tabletop. Don't set your hat like that. When you come home, just don't put it flat. Number one, okay? Big number one on the screen there. Um, this one, what you do is basically there's a curve to the brim called the flange, and that's what allows it to flip down and up. Um, there was an elderly gent in, uh, yesterday. He says his hat won't stay down, just won't flip down. That's what happens. They won't stay down because they're soft and there's just no, no snap left. So it's uh, neither up or down. It's just kind of like a you know, potato chip, I call it. So if you want your hat to keep its shape, be able to snap up and down, which it should be if it's a snap brim. You should have snap down and up in front, down and up and back. Even the sides, you know, everything should have a down and up position. That is due to this curve, which is called the flange. And it's one of the hardest things for people to reshape, um, unless you have like some equipment, you know, stiffener, some know-how and some time. Getting that flat brim back to a curvy brim is very hard. It's not something most of us can do with just steam and our fingers. Um, it's, it's tough. So, we try to preserve it. My very corny cliche to remember this one is preserve the curve. So, preserve the curve. So, when you come home, don't do this. Because what happens is the hat is wet. Let's say it's wet just with humidity, just with you know, like it's wet in the air even. And the hat just gets heavy from like a misty kind of a drizzle type of thing. There's weight to that water. The weight pushes it down and makes it less curvy. Especially when you lay it down on the, the table. What happens is it kind of like, it dries flat like the tabletop too. 
So the worst thing you can do is this. Okay, it takes the curve out of your brim. The second bad thing it does is that when you go to pick up your hat every day, how do you pick it up? You just kind of close your eyes, pretend you're doing it naturally. You just pick it up like this. Okay. So, you just gave it a pinch. Just kind of like that. And every time you're doing it, you're doing it more, 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 more. You know, you pick it up in the same place. You figure, what, four times a day at least, right? Probably more like, you know, eight times. We'll say four times a day times 365 days a year. Okay, so we're going up in the thousands for a year, thousands of times of grabbing it like that. I guarantee if I did this thousands of times right now, I would almost destroy this front. It would be just, well not destroyed, but it would wear it down. Grabbing it a thousand times is just like folding a piece of paper a thousand times. It, sh it starts to become threadbare, like on the, on the crease. And the threadbare gets worse and worse and worse until it pokes a little hole through it. And then the hole gets bigger, 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 bigger. And the whole front is gone from grabbing it there. You wear it out. Every single time you pick up the hat, take it off your head, put it on your head, take it off on, you're grabbing it in the same exact way, same place. Pressure in these three fingers, one, two, three, same places. Generally, it takes the brunt of it right there. Uh, a lot of people bring their hats in to get this part repaired. They ask me to patch it. Um, it's, it's the first place where dress hats go. They all go right there. They come in and they say they got a hole in their hat. I say, where is it? And if they call up, I say, where is it in the pinch? And they say, yeah, most of the time it is. So that's where they go. There is one way to just avoid all this stuff, the losing of the flange, the hole over here and wearing it out and out of shape and stuff. Just don't do this. Okay, that's number one. Wow, my hair's, I gotta get a haircut today. All right, upside down. Put your hair upside, put your hat, hat upside down when you get home. This is hat 101, everybody knows this one. Tissue box is so silly, okay. Let's get something better. Okay, this is my, my son's little, little toy here. Upside down, like that. That's how you put your hat. When you come home, put it on the shelf, the dresser, tabletop, whatever. Upside down is great. The flange is still flangy, it's curvy. The other thing is, even though you're wearing your brim down, like this, right, when you come home, flip it back up, fix the crown so the crown is in its correct shape, like that, okay, and upside down. So the hat dries correctly. It dries with its flange curved, the brim the right way. In other words, it dries the way you leave it. So if you want this to be even, you can even even that out a little bit. Next day it will look like this. There's no surprises, you just know it will. Um, keep your hat upside down, that's the long and the short of it. Hanging it up is just as good as putting it upside down. The only problem with hanging it up is we tend to grab it also in the same place when it's hung up, grab it. So I feel like upside down is a little better than hanging it up. So if it's on a coat rack, like most of us do, we got our coats on this thing, we just stick the hat on the top part, that's what I do. Um, just be aware that this is the weak part of the hat that everybody wears out, and that's the danger part. Especially on a Panama. A Panama, you could crack it and break it one time on a straw hat, certain straw hats, most straw hats. On a felt, it will take you many, many, many times, many years to go through this. So it's not that big a deal, um, but it's kind of a big deal for the brim. So keep your hats upside down, especially, especially if it's wet and especially if it's a straw. Like a Panama, just don't do this. You're going to make cracks here. I mean, we don't mind selling you a new hat every year or every two years. That's fine, you know. That's what keeps us in business and stuff. But if you want your hat to last longer, listen to Kev. You know, I have like, you know, ridiculously wild hair and um, I tend to babble on a lot and uh, ramble on senselessly to anybody who's willing to put up with me. But I know my hats and I definitely know my stuff. I'm working at the same place for 24 years, opening to closing, and uh, I'm there on weekends, Saturdays, I'm there on Sundays, I'm there from the minute we open the gate to the minute we close the gate, most days, and um, since 1994. So, uh, safe to say this is also one of the biggest, most extensive 
most authentic uh, hat shops of its of this type, you know, in, in the world. So definitely in New York, maybe in the country, but maybe there's a couple others like us in the country. You know, there's like maybe two or three like this, but we're the biggest, the best, and I'm right there. You know, uh, people come to me with their hats when there's problems. I'm the one who knows what's up with them. Trust me, um, I know this stuff. Keep your hat upside down, all your problems. I mean, my hats always look good, right? My hats look like really good. I don't really do a lot, um, to be honest. What I do is I keep them upside down. Sometimes I even stack them, but I stack them loosely, very loosely. I don't squash them so the ribbons don't get bashed by the other. But um, I keep them upside down, that's all I do. Um, I don't wear them in the rain that much, but when I do, um, the brim goes up like this and it stays upside down. I straighten it out like this. I just set it. And all of my hats look pretty good. Um, even the ones that are really funky and on the inside from being sweated on for, you know, 20 years or whatever, the outside still look good. Like my green hat, one of those is super old and the other one is just old, you know. Um, so... I kind of know my stuff when it comes to like how to store a hat. This is this is it, you know. It all comes down to keeping your hat off the brim. This is the number one hat killer. This will keep your hats around for a long time, um, almost indefinitely. What you want to do is change this band, change the lining, even change the leather band if needed. Um, those things might get funky in down the road, you know. And those can be changed, just like resoling your shoes. Your shoes can last forever. You don't need to do this often. It might be once every 20 years you need upgrades like that. Um, uh, if you sweat a lot, it could be this thing here needs changing once every five years. But um, you can keep these hats almost indefinitely if you take care of them, especially the, the good quality ones. Okay, number two, what's the next thing? Heat. Heat is a killer. Um, I get a lot of people with shrunken hats. Some people buy hats between sizes. And instead of going for the bigger one, they go for the smaller one and they ask it to be stretched. What happens is when it's up in your, uh, in your closet for a year or two years or five years in, and not being worn, the leather dehydrates. It loses water, but so slowly, like, you know, a uh, half a millimeter every two years or something. But after five years, you can feel it, you know. It's a few millimeters tighter and, uh, it, well, more than that. It could be like a you know, half a centimeter tighter. It could be a centimeter tighter. And that's a lot. Um, if you're going from 58 to 57, that's like a size. So 57 centimeters from 58 to 57, it's kind of like a, a large to a medium. Any kind of shrinkage from heat is bad. Um, it generally means that you have to have it stretched really aggressively. You're saying oh, it's, a, it's a little tight, but that little correction, when you make it okay with the stretcher, it's not enough because it comes back. And then doing it a little bit over, it's not enough because it comes back. So you've got to stretch it way over, like three times the amount you need. Like, you need 30% bigger, but you've got to go like 90 or 100% bigger because it all comes back except for a little bit. And um, there are other ways to stretch your hats. You can take the reed out, um, the end part of a leather sweatband right there. You know that little shiny part of a sweatband? There's a wire in there, often a nylon wire, but it's got a lot of force. You can clip that. You basically just clip that last, last piece here. Just clip it right there in the back seam, right where the bow is behind your head clip it so that there's no pressure, then stretch it. You can even stretch it over your knee if you don't have a hat stretcher. Just be careful. Uh, give it pressure, you know, like a lot of pressure, but slowly increasing. Don't overdo it. Heat is the worst. Heat will definitely mess your hat. So, um, <clears throat> even if you don't have a leather sweatband um, inside, if you have a light felt hat, um, it's going to shrink the felt. If you have a, a fur felt hat, they say fur felt doesn't shrink, but it does. Um, 
it shrinks way, way less and way, way slower. And it's very subtle and you have to really abuse it with a lot of heat, but it does shrink. So if you've got like a really good $350, um, $400 Italian hat and you bought it in like 1997, um, chances are all of those, you know, like 20 years of winters and heats and radiators just pumping heat at it, you wearing it, and it's just like, it's a lot of abuse for one little piece of leather. So um, any heat at all is gonna mess up your hats. It's gonna shrink them a little. It's gonna shrink the leather a lot. My advice to you is find the coolest part of the house to store them. If you have blasting radiators near your closet, don't keep it in your closet. Even though you think it's really cool to keep your hat boxes in your closet, just don't do it, you know? Find a cooler place, someplace cool in the house. If you have a basement, generally heat rises, so the lowest part of the house is the coolest. Um, or one very important thing is when your hat is wet, whether it's wet from the rain or the snow, or wet, like the sweatband inside is really wet from sweat, so like sweaty. Let's say it's a July, August day, and you just sweat the heck out of your Panama, right? That kind of wet counts too. Don't put it near any heat. If you've got like a lot of sun blasting through the window, that counts. Um, keep these things in cool places, air conditioner in the summer, or crack the window in the winter. If you have a, a bathroom or a kitchen where you could close the door and crack the window, let your hats dry at room temperature or a cool environment, cool or cold, just anything but heat. Um, they cannot dry in heat. It's just like throwing it in the dryer. It's not good. And uh, I don't know. I think that's about it. Anything else that's really bad for your hats? What else is the well? Yeah, rolling your hats. You know, pe some people have really bad technique rolling. If you're gonna roll your hats, make sure you don't slap it into quarters. Like fold, 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 fold and then put it in your bag. Um, they're not meant for that. There are people who abuse their roll-up hats. They buy like a you know $400 Italian rollable hat and then just roll it really sloppy, kind of like, you know, fold, 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 instead of a smooth round roll. So the idea is that you don't fold it because folding makes little creases, like little, you know, lines when you open it. So those lines, they don't really go away. So when you're making these folds, you're screwing your hat up. What you want to do is roll it round, very round. Okay, <laughs> you don't want to see that. And um, that's another thing I see a lot of people, they come in once a year for me to resurrect their hats because they just roll them terribly and they know that they're hard on their hats and I just keep bringing them back to life. Um, it's not gonna work forever. Um, that doesn't work forever, so also those really, really good roll-up hats that I'm talking about from Italy. Those are just not available anymore, so they're starting to disappear. So don't abuse them. If you have any good old ones like I'm talking about, um, hold on to them and treat them well. Don't abuse them. What, what else? Um, stacking your hats is terrible. I'm guilty of this. Um, the hats that I don't wear, I stack. So if you stack your hats, the top hat, okay, goes like this, pushes this ribbon scrunches it down like an accordion. Uh, you could say I'm careful, I do it loosely. I'm careful too, I'm a loose stacker, but I mess up all my ribbons. I don't mess them up on my good hats, like the ones that I keep at work. Um, the ones that I don't wear, that I sort of keep in my closet here, they all have bad ribbons, like every single one, because I stack them and it's bad. Um, if you have to stack and you want to stack them, there are ways to, um, you could do this, you could take some cardboard, make a cardboard ring about so thick, thick enough to cover a band. You take a piece of cardboard, like you know, about this long, like a belt, you make a circle out of it, you know, fold it, staple it, or tape it, whatever you want to do. Um, staples are fine, you know, I us usually use like a tape. And then what you do is you make a ring, and the ring covers this, so make it big enough to, you know, that it's not squeezing. It's got to be have some little space. And then you go hat, ring, hat, ring, hat, ring. You could go use cardboard rings. You could use foam rings. You could even stop by JJ's in New York. I will give you a half dozen foam rings for free. Or you could do the old saran wrap method 
where you basically go buy small garbage bags, like this size of a crown. I think that's like, what is that, quartz? You know, like the kind you use in the little tiny trash bags, like in your office or like in the bathroom, like this. You get the small size, like garbage bags, okay? You just cover the crown. You could even cut the bag like down, like, you know, let's say the bag is like this, you cut top the top of it off. So it's only like a crown, sort of a cover. And then you take a hat, little garbage bag, saran wrap lid thing. It's like a hat condom. So let's say hat, hat condom, then hat, hat condom, hat, hat condom. Those we call them dust covers. Um, we might have some dust covers too, real ones, not the garbage bag types. But you know, you know the idea. I'm looking for a bag here. I think you, you, you get it, right? You know, you just kind of cut the top of a bag, turn it upside down, flip it over your crown. Basically, that will protect these. Um, do something. If you don't have uh, the bag, you know, go for the ring. Here, I'm gonna make a ring. I'll show you. All right. This is how you make the ring. You take some cardboard like this, okay? Piece of cardboard. You staple it or tape it into a ring, okay? So, it goes like that. That's a little too thick. I would say maybe, yeah. You know, about the size of my band. That's, that's about how thick you want them to be, like that, you know? So yeah, hat, ring. Another hat goes on top of here. So basically, nothing touches underneath there. It sits on here. Okay, um, so you make stacks of hats like that. Hat, ring, hat, ring, hat, ring. Hat cover, hat cover, hat cover. That's how you do it in the hat industry, you know. We don't make our own rings and own covers out of cardboard and garbage bags, but um, it's one of my son's things. Like he wrote here, 12 days of Christmas song. 11 monsters piping, 10 monsters leaping, 9 monsters dancing, 8 monsters milking, 7 monsters swimming. And he's got all his characters here. Entrance, two yummy cookies and a red monster up in a tree. And he's got all his Christmas books here too. He's got Ho Ho Ho, Rudolph, is that the kid who wanted to be a dentist? I like that guy. How to Catch an Elf. Gingerbread Man. I like that guy. Can't catch him, right? Hooray for the holidays. Santa's Temporary Team. Look at that. Bears. And The Twelve Days of Christmas, which is one of his favorite songs. He loves that one. It's a beautiful book. Like, absolutely gorgeous. Oh, look at that. The music is in there. Look at that illustrations one anyway so i'm doing the hat show from my son's my six-year-old son's room today he got here he's got his toys there's the count oh yes yeah, so you open the door and then he i think he looks at your son how does that work oh, yeah. Oh, come in. <laughs> I'm going to teach you about hats. <laughs> All right, I'll play with toys a little bit longer. I'm going to have to say goodbye. You look like a baby carriage. I think Ernie and Bert go in here. Yeah, it's like a stroller. Yeah. Oh, this one's really cool. The Death Star. Dun, 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 dun. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, Luke, I see the special thing. You ready to take your shot now? Yeah, I see the little groove. Okay, he goes the pick. The Death Star blew up. Yay! Yay! Da, 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 da. Now it's the cookie star. Yay! Because it's old. Hey, Kevin from that old JJ. I seem to know I haven't lost my mind.